this is our ethyl and beans f1b petite size golden i'm sorry not golden doodle Ooh, double doodle litter and it is another small litter we have a lot of fours this is another litter of four with just one little girl and three boys and uh first i'll start by people always ask me what in the world is a double doodle a double doodle is the cross between a golden doodle and a labradoodle now what we've done is taken a miniature um golden doodle and a miniature labradoodle mix them together to get an f1 double doodle which is ethel then what we've done is we've taken that ethel and mixed her with a red toy poodle beans and that's what gives us the b part of the f1b and it also takes them down in size to that petite size which is around 16 or i'm sorry 16 to 20 pounds are you taking a pillow okay there's that better all right i've got my kids with me so you're just going to hear a lot of chitter chatter in the background here um this is our first video they are three weeks old this is their three week video and they're just kind of doing a little bit of nothing but that's what we expect yes <laughs> let me go through everybody and then we'll just chit chat while you take a look at them this is our pink collar girl she is actually the chunkiest of the litter there's only four ethel usually has like eight so um this is a lot of or a, a lot less puppies than what she normally has which means they have a lot of milk for just four babies so say i'm i'm taking advantage of that all you can eat buffet yes you are i'm a chunky monkey our double doodles tend to be shorter a little more stocky and chunky but um still that petite size and she is a super dark red that's the one thing that our double doodles have in common look at the little tiny white spot on her chest dark black nose and you can kind of see she almost has those lab eyes in there got a little bit of white on the back of the toes there yes um that deep red is kind of what ethel's puppies are known for um it stays super dark um and yeah just absolutely beautiful okay so that's the one girl let's go ahead with the boys are you back there going potty this is red collar boy um oh oh um pink girl is going to be a soft cotton wavy all right red collar boy is going to be a soft cotton wavy even though you can see some curl um in the front here he really is more of a wavy coat the double doodles that we have the b in the f1b makes sure and it guarantees that we're not going to have any shedding but if you see some curly it's still a soft cotton texture it is not a fleece so the curl that you're seeing on the front here is not going to be a thick fleece he's got white on his chest isn't he pretty look at those lab eyes that typical teddy bear lab all right and you can see um he and pink collar are fairly close in color all right where is i'll get black collar in a minute the smallest size of this litter is green collar boy he is also a dark red white on the chest black nose little shorter ears but look can you see around the eyes how it's a lighter that's that lab in there so we'll watch the eyes the eyes could amber up a little bit on us yes all righty are you peeking up back there peekaboo peekaboo here's black collar boy oh my gosh he is a teddy bear look super duper teddy bear look his hair is a little shorter right now we'll see how that grows out so he's a soft cotton wavy look at his face he's very lab looking in the face those droopy eyes yes a little white on the chest like everybody else he has the perfect teddy bear look i can't wait over the next two weeks to really look at that coat and see how how that comes in it's not a lab coat it's definitely thicker but it's shorter than the rest of the babies here so we'll take a look at that um you know depending on what you're looking for in your doodle I know that he's got that perfect teddy bear face that everybody wants in those eyes, those beautiful lab eyes. Can you look at me for a minute? Hi. So pink collar in this litter is going first pick. So all we have available are boys. We do have two 
mail picking spots available. Um, of course, I need to check my email, that can change. But just so people know what we do have available. So right now, week three, what are we doing to get them all chunky and fat? Um, they're having their gruel. Their gruel is the first puppy mush that they eat. And uh, every breeder does it a little different. What we do is we have their premium puppy food. We mix it up with a nutritional supplement, their milk replacer, which is a, a puppy formula, some warm water. We blend that up into a nice, like a porridge, oat milk consistency, and they love that. They don't have any teeth right now. Yeah, I'm just gumming it. I'm just gumming it. So besides the fact that there's just four of them and they're nursing and their mama's got a lot of good, rich milk, um, they're also um, taking part in the gruel, which helps them not to suck mama down so much and deplete all of her nutrients, but it also keeps them growing and getting chunky monkey. But we love chunky monkey. I had a, an owner that was afraid to call one of the puppies fat in um, and look at that little paw. Pink is the chunkiest, followed by red, then black, and then the smallest is little green collar. And you can kind of see their colors here. Yes. So um, we're not doing much here at week three. We're just kind of chilling out. Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> Come here. Come here, sweet muffin. Next week is another preventative deworming. Um, you gonna go play with Nathan? Huh? And we do that every two weeks until they go home. Um, that's just part of puppy life. And when they do go home, we will, um, you, your vet will continue the deworming process until they've had all of their shots. And once they're done with all of that, then they can go out in public. Um, I tell people that, yes, they can go in your backyard. They can go in your, you know, like your family's backyard with a, uh, uh, another pet that's already been vaccinated. We just don't want them going in public areas where there might be other animals that you don't know um, their history or where wildlife comes in and out a lot. Oh, we've got a Chiquita puppy that wants to come play with us. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, they want to play. Um, that is incredibly dangerous to let them go out. Like for instance, um, we keep them off the floor at the vet, keep them in their carrier. Um, when you go to um, like a store like PetSmart, really don't take them at all. I know people do. I have seen a lot of people um, on Instagram, they've got their puppies in a grocery cart at PetSmart. Understand other puppies are also in those grocery carts and they may or may not have been exposed to something. Um, so you, even though your puppy may not be on the ground, even if they're in a grocery cart, they might be exposed to something. Now, if you put something down in the grocery cart and they don't touch the sides or anything like that, that's different. Um, I always say use a puppy, puppy carrier or you can even use a puppy stroller. I know um, the, the kids actually have some. I'm hoping to show that next week. <laughs> so take a, take, make sure that you protect them at all costs during um, that portion of time that they are not covered by their vaccinations. They need to be at least seven days past their third set of vaccinations. That way they are covered before going out. And if they are exposed to something, they can at least fight it. Oh my goodness. And I don't have my earbuds in, so um, it's getting noisy around here. Bill, can you pick up that puppy so I can hear? Thank you. Say, we're not, we're not behaving. We're not behaving, no. Anywho, um, so those are just some things to think of. So think about, you know, where are we gonna go for walks? Leash training is just fine to do in the house. You can go ahead and put the leash on them and just let them walk around with it. They're gonna roll around, chew on it, stumble, fall, and that's fine, that gets them used to it. They get used to the tugging part. And um, then once they're a little more used to it, you can even walk them in your house and then around your own backyard. Now, let's say you are in an apartment or a condo situation that does not have a yard. Um, you're still gonna do all that walking experience in the house, but um, look up potty patches. You'll see I've got two of my favorites, an expensive option and a less expensive option in the description below. Um, 
use a potty patch on a, a patio. Any kind of patio or decking that you have in a high rise, make sure that you have reinforced the railings. So um, maybe a mesh or puppy gate, you wanna make sure these little heads can fit through anything. So you wanna make sure that um, it is puppy proofed, but you can put a potty patch um, out there. You can even use a potty pad in one of those um, frame holders that keeps it from moving around. And that gets them still used to um, ringing their bells and then you take them to their place to potty. That's also a great option at night, um, especially when you know you don't wanna be taking them out in the middle of the night down the stairs or elevator and go out and be alone. So um, just some options there, some things that you need to think about and um, and we do our best to get them prepared for you. All right, I am gonna, they're just, they're just doing nothing here. Say we are just snoozing away and Nathan has little green over there. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. These videos, I know I say are normally up on Fridays, but with all the different uh, litters that we have, I'm posting these midweek versus Friday. So we will see you next week.